The Super Mario franchise is probably one of the most diverse franchises regardless of medium. 2D platformers, RPGs, racing games, 3D collectathons, golfing games, puzzle games, Olympic games? Not to mention all the franchises that have spun off from Mario like Yoshi, Donkey Kong, WarioWare, etc. Given the success of Mario as a mascot and an icon, it's easy to believe that most if not all products that mustachioed plumbers face is slapped on are carefully constructed, polished pieces of media. They're brothers. They're plumbers. The original Super Mario Bros. on the NES still holds up to this day, something that can't really be said for most NES games, let's be honest. Mario revolutionized 3D platforming entirely with the release of Super Mario 64, and it kept getting better from there. Both Galaxy games are fantastic in their own way, 3D Land and 3D World are some of the most technically proficient platformers in recent memory, despite how safe they might conceptually be, and do I even need to mention how good Odyssey is? But there's always been that one title that seems to be the black sheep of the empire that is Super Mario, and that's Super Mario Sunshine. Sunshine was released on August 26, 2002 for the Nintendo GameCube, and had some massive shoes to fill. With the only Mario game launching on Nintendo's next-gen hardware being an experimental Luigi horror game, along with being the follow-up to Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine didn't just have to be great, it had to be monumental to live up to the expectations of Nintendo's fanbase. What resulted is one of the most divisive Mario titles in existence, but also one of my favorites. Right off the bat, I want to address Sunshine's faults because I feel the good outweighs the bad here. It's clear from some design choices that Super Mario Sunshine was rushed to market. It doesn't have the freedom of 64 with its mission structure, basically forcing players to go shine by shine to complete a world, with some of the shines being copy-pasted like red coins or Shadow Mario missions. Blue coins counting towards shines, which are directly tied to 100% completion, is an obvious attempt at padding out the game, and 100% completion isn't worth it when you see what you're rewarded with. Spoiler alert, it's a picture. And there are some shines that are downright bad, like wonky physics-based pachinko machines and this goddamn watermelon mission sh all that being said, they're mostly avoidable quirks that don't ruin the game as a whole. To be honest, my playthroughs of Sunshine are just for fun, so I skip whichever shines are frustrating, only collect whatever blue coins I can, and beat the game with little to no issues. Overall, Sunshine is pretty damn great in my opinion, for a number of reasons. Nintendo has pretty much perfected how Mario controls at this point, regardless of which dimension he's in, Sunshine included. Controlling Mario feels great, better than 64 in my opinion. He's gained a few new moves that are a blast to pull off, like the belly slide, while keeping classics like the triple jump, backflip, and side jump. Sadly, the long jump is absent from Sunshine, most likely due to design decisions when adding a new mechanic to Mario's arsenal, Flood. I am Flood, a flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. I hope to be of assistance. I really admire Nintendo's dedication to experimentation during the GameCube era, and Super Mario Sunshine is no exception. How do you innovate on a character whose main method of locomotion and attack is jumping? Well, that's where Flood comes in. I love Flood for its sheer potential when it comes to platforming and traversing levels in Sunshine, hovering to get over large gaps or save yourself from certain doom, blasting yourself up to hard to reach or secret areas, or harnessing your inner Sonic and using your speed to run over water or blast through doors to access new areas. You can also use Flood to clean up the goop around Isle Delfino, one of the more contentious mechanics of Sunshine. Honestly, using Flood to clean up muck around the island's many areas is kind of impressive tech for the time, like the reverse of Splatoon almost. Yoshi makes his first official debut in a 3D title, and it's just like Sunshine as a whole. This version of Yoshi is new and unique. He can still gulp up items like coins and fruit, but now Yoshi has the ability to spew juice out to interact with the world. You can use this new, albeit gross, ability to unlock secret areas along with his flutter jump, which is also fun to jump around levels with. He also disintegrates in water, which is disturbing to say the least. While he's not an integral to the core of Sunshine, it's still nice to play around with Yoshi and his abilities in a 3D space, something only ever seen again in Galaxy 2. Speaking of something new, Mario now has a story kind of. It's a little bit more involved than Bowser Steals Princess Go Save, although it's nothing special in terms of a narrative. Sunshine is also the debut title of Bowser Jr., who is now a staple in the franchise, so much so that he's even appeared in Super Smash Bros. Under the guise of Shadow Mario, Bowser Jr. spreads goop all over Isle Delfino, and the residents contract Sonic Adventure 2 Syndrome and lock Mario up for Shadow Mario's crimes. Now I know what's going on! The military has mistaken me for the likes of you! Again, nothing special, but I do like how Bowser Jr.'s plan is a much more tame version of Bowser's overall. It's a cute touch. Mario and the gang actually speak, sort of. What happened? 
There's very few spoken dialogue scenes in the game, and while some are goofy, it adds to the charm of Sunshine as a whole. Isle Delfino has much to do with that charm, as it's one of my favorite locations a Mario game's ever been set in. Isle Delfino has a lot in common with, believe it or not, the world of Dark Souls. Bear with me. Sunshine's many levels aren't interconnected per se, but the whole island feels that way due to small touches like being able to see the levels off in the distance like Pianta Park from Delfino Plaza or Rico Harbor from Bianco Hills. It's the first time in a Mario game that's felt like a real place Mario when the player has to explore. Previous and future titles employ the idea that levels have nothing to do with each other, which does have its merits. Galaxy does this the best as a level concept doesn't have to be constrained to one or two aesthetic ideas, but the way Super Mario Sunshine's levels and worlds are designed make El Delfino feel special. Just having the feeling of an interconnected world doesn't make Isle Delfino come to life, though. That is the work of the Piantas. I adore these goofballs. Their Banjo-Kazooie-esque speech is more charming than it is annoying, the design matches Isle Delfino near perfectly, and they're just a fun addition to the ever-expanding cast of Mario characters. Isle Delfino is made up of a few different moving parts similar to how 64's Peach's Castle was designed. An open hub world players can explore with levels scattered about that need unlocking, and once in those levels, several different missions players can complete to collect the star, or in this case, shine sprites. Overall, my favorite setup for a 3D Mario game, Odyssey included. Delfino Plaza is Sunshine's hub, and it's much more open than in 64, which granted is probably due to hardware limitations of the N64. Delfino Plaza is open from the get-go, with levels to unlock by beating bosses gooping up the place, secrets to discover by utilizing different flood nozzles, and just an overall more organic feel to it. Peach's Castle had a few hint toads scattered about, but Delfino Plaza has Pianta's manning storefronts or just walking around the plaza, some with secret side missions that grant the player a shine sprite. Nintendo really utilized the game GameCube's power to create a much more robust hub this time around that feels alive and welcoming. Much of that has to do with Super Mario Sunshine's theme of a tropical island. While Mario Galaxy gets bonus points for its creativity when it comes to level thematics, I feel Sunshine pulled something much more impressive off with its levels. Galaxy had the luxury of being in space, having no two levels connected by any sort of theme or idea. One minute you could be on a bee planet, the next you could be running upside down on a spooky castle adrift in space. While Galaxy excels at this, Sunshine's dedication to one specific theme meant every single level had to stay to that theme, but also be different enough to stand out from each other. A tall task for sure, but I feel Nintendo pulled it off with flying colors. Each level in Sunshine feels great to just be in, as weird as that sounds. A tropical island setting can get really tired really fast, but each level mixes it up in ways to keep it fresh. There's a mechanical-esque harbor level, a level set in a quiet bay, a theme park complete with rides, a treetop village, and a beachside hotel. All are different in their own way while staying consistent to Sunshine's theme and world building. I find it much more impressive to be constrained to one idea and stretching that theme as far as possible than pulling random, albeit creative ideas out of thin air. While there aren't many, any, seven not including the hub and final level, they're all memorable for their own reasons. This has to do with the missions themselves. There are some really great ones here that make at least one or two memories within each level. Cooling off Chain Chomps in Pianta Village, ascending the windmill in Bianco Hills, and taking on PD Piranha, blooper surfing in Rico Harbor, defending the hotel from the Manta Storm in Serena Beach, or washing the teeth of a giant eel in Noki Bay. All great times, and all shaking up the formula of Sunshine's main gimmick. Some of the standout missions are the ones where Flood is taken away by Shadow Mario. Everyone seems to love these missions and for good reason. Just like Mario is stripped of Flood, so too is the fluff of a typical 3D Mario game, and instead the mission focuses on straightforward platforming challenges. These would be the precursor to Galaxy as a whole, with the creative empty void backgrounds and floating platforms. These missions are enjoyable by themselves, but I find the idea of them interesting from a game design perspective. Training players to rely on Flood to get them out of trouble during normal missions, and then ripping that safety net away and making them prove their platforming skills is a cool twist no Mario game has done up to this point. While not all missions are winners, the journey sometimes Sunshine takes you on is as memorable as Mario Adventures get. And the best way to accent a memory is with music, and Sunshine does not disappoint. Mario's music has always been really hit or miss for me, personally. There are some tracks that are legendary, like World 1-1 or the underground theme from the original Super Mario Brothers, the slide theme from 64, or a good ad galaxy from, well, Galaxy. But overall, the consistency of Mario's soundtracks pales in comparison to his rival Sonic, one of the few things the Blue Blur has over Mario. But Sunshine delivers one of the most cohesive and special soundtracks in the whole franchise. The man, the myth, the legend, Koji Kondo, composed Sunshine Sunshine soundscapes, and it's wonderful. Each track matches perfectly with the level it's paired with, keeping a similar sound with unique instruments causing the levels to come alive. From the title theme to the end credits theme and everything in between, the soundtrack is on point with some of my favorites being Serena Beach's Hotel, Noki Bay, Bianco 
Chicago Hills. And of course, Ayal Delfino. Sunshine is something of an oddity in today's industry. Huge franchises taking risks with their design principles or directions is something rarely seen when staying the course and playing it safe can lead to a more profitable game. Taking Mario and doing something experimental with him at one of the heights of his success took guts from Nintendo, and even though it could have been better, I admire it for its willingness to do something different, something unique. Super Mario Sunshine will always hold a special place in my heart, and even though it's not the best in the series objectively, I'll always remember my first playthrough of Sunshine over Galaxy, 3D World, or even 60. The whole of Isle Delfina was fun to explore, beautiful, and best of all, it's something totally new and unique for Mario, and I'll always admire it for that. <laughs> 